Good morning, Phil, and thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. So certainly um, the news um, that we saw from Pfizer and BioNTech were definitely positive for markets. But, um, you know, the numbers that we saw yesterday were a little bit um, unreal, specifically compared to, for example, the tech stocks uh, major downturn. So how do you explain um, what we saw yesterday when it comes to the energy sector in particular? And is this going to be the trend uh, in the medium in the medium term? Yeah, if you look at crude oil, though, it's got to break out above 42. I mean, if you pull up that daily chart, expand it, you could see that every time we've come up to about $42, um, you know, we haven't seen a continuation of the breakout. So that's our level of resistance. We do believe that that movement yesterday, I mean, it was justified because of optimism. It did reignite the bull camp and give some life in the people that believe that energy demand is going to take a turn once we do get the vaccine. Obviously, if you look at cruise lines, airlines, they were some of the best performing sectors in the markets. Um, a lot of people believe that, you know, once we do get the vaccine, that um, the defenses will be down, the lockdowns will start to ease, and we'll start to see travel pick up. Gasoline is one of the, you know, least speculative long positions that are out there. So you're going to see money managers race into gasoline once they do prove that this vaccine is effective and distributed. Yes, yeah, certainly. And so what can we expect um, in particular uh, for the energy market um, in, in the upcoming days? Because it looks like when we look at it, the, of course, the future so far, also today is going to be a very positive day. The, you know, the, the, the deal is, is that many of the infrastructure stocks, because of the fact that also we're going through kind of this second phase of transition via political party and then also we're going to see an uptick in infrastructure stocks. It's going to be a lot of building and a lot of creation. That demand is going to take in a lot of gasoline, a lot of oil. So we we are bullish on the market, but we feel that it's going to um, that the rally is going to stall in this area, and then it's going to be not until the second quarter of next year when we start to take off again. It'll be reflected in weaker economic data coming up. Um, so I'd like to talk about um, the new administration. Of course, I'm talking about a president-elect um, Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris. What this new administration uh, means uh, for, for the energy sector? Because, of course, Biden um, highlighted several times that um, he, he wants a green economy and not only a complete transition to renewable energy. What does it mean? Uh, for, for, for the energy sector in particular from now up to four years? Yeah, I, I, you know, it's, it's really unfortunate because the U.S. has strived so hard to become energy independent through fracting. And it appears that, you know, Joe Biden is very anti-fracting, you know, and I think that that's why even if you look right now, some of the news agencies are questioning the election results around Pennsylvania, um, larger, large fracting producing state there. So, you know, we might see a, a bit of a, a decline in the oil sector at first. We think that, you know, we're going to start to see if they start renegotiating some of these deals with other countries, specifically Iran, if they're able to sell on the, you know, OPEC front and start bringing oil back onto the market, you might see oil um, get flooded out there again. And it seems like the U.S. has taken a step back as far as any energy independency. Other commodities like silver should outperform if they do pass these green energy deals because of the fact that solar wind turbine um, utilize a lot of silver. Are you preoccupied about this transition to renewable um, energy because it's definitely a very expensive one? What does it mean for the single companies like, for example, Exxon, Chevron and, and, and the other majors? Yeah, they're still going to go through a lot of consolidation at the moment. Um, there's probably going to be a lot of mergers and acquisitions. Unfortunately, a lot of the smaller energy companies uh, did inquire a lot of debt. So those are your more susceptible companies for these takeover targets. You know, if you look at on the solar ETFs, they had all priced in a Biden win. So they had come up quite a bit. It's just a matter of you know, if you do have these divided Congress, these, you know, these lame duck type sessions where things can, can't get passed, we might see a stall in some of these markets. 
I was wondering um, what are um, the gold targets at this point? So gold actually pulled back to our long-term support 1850 yesterday. We had re-entered the market with many clients. We believe that gold futures, it still doesn't take it away from um, you know, the fact that we're gonna be in a low interest rate environment. We're gonna continue to see um, additional stimulus measures come to the market. So you know, we are optimistic on gold. Gold's probably gonna trade back up to 1920 where we'll take off those positions that we re recently entered. And my final question is when it comes to market internals, what are you looking at? Well, the you know, if you look at the NASDAQ, I mean, we, we kind of knew this was going to happen, that once they do get some positive news about a vaccine, we'll see the NASDAQ that'll have its capitulation point peak. And then your infrastructure, you know, your Russell 2000, your S&P, Dow Jones are all going to get a lift. So we think that some of these markets, they may have overshot each other. You know, you look at like the individual stocks, the Amazons, the um, you know, Facebook, Netflix, all your stay-at-home stocks, Peloton, they, we, we feel that those are all coming back to um, value buy zones for long-term appreciation. All right. Thank you very much, Philip Schreibel, Chief Market Strategist of Blue Line Futures. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day. Yeah, you take care. Bye-bye.